this is Trev and welcome to my blog. Welcome to my first product review. This time round, I'm going to be showing you this Evercoat Easy Sand Filler. I've been using this filler for about four years now and it's very impressive stuff. I'm also going to throw in some helpful tips and tricks to do with using car body filler. There are very many different guises of car body fillers on the market these days and uh, it can be quite daunting to know what kind of products you're going to need and um, these are fiberglass paste repair products and these are fillers and um, a quick price point here this can is about a third of the size of this one so there's three times more f filler in that can than there is on that and they're all these cans are about the same sort of cost. So why the difference in cost? Well, they all have extremely different properties. This is a very short-stranded um, glass fibre repair paste. So glass fibre paste is basically chopped strands of glass mixed with um, fibreglass resin. And um, like I say, these have very different properties. Um, this has superb adhesion properties, much better than the one below, but I would use the one below for different applications, say like skimming a large flatter area, I use these for uh, reinforcement repairs. If I've welded a panel in, then it's very good because it can actually help seal the weld because it's pretty impervious to water because it hasn't got the, the uh, kind of powdered um, additives that fillers have. Fillers can absorb water whereas uh, fiberglass is pretty much just glass and um, like I say resin and um, it seals things up quite well. This is why we use this. Also very good for doing small reinforcement repairs and uh, like I say you do, these do have completely different properties so I'd use these for different jobs. These fillers they have extremely two different types of filler here so we've got one made by Evercoat, which is a lightweight filler. We've got a, a U-Pole Dolphin. Um, I'm not using this that much, but this is a good all-rounder, really, this filler. Nothing wrong with this product whatsoever. But um, what's the difference in properties? Well, this one's 5,035 grams. This one's 2,564 grams in weight, both exactly the same volume, which means that this filler is half the weight of this one. Okay, fine, you say, well, just use this product. Well, no, this product isn't very good at finishing things off. So what I would use this for is if I had a very, very large flat area of uh, bodywork that was low and I needed to build it out, I don't want to add significant weight to the repair area. So I will use this first. I'll skim the uh, panel. I'll get the shape more or less correct leaving it slightly low just low enough to put a finishing filler over the top so this is what how I'd use these products in different ways this is a good all-rounder this is the star of the show um, this is Evercoat Easy Sands again another little price point everything here is all sort of pretty much the same price and um, we've got 880 mils of filler in this in this little bottle. And we've got three liters over here, and we're talking the same price. Now, if you just go in on price alone, and you bought this thinking, "Well, I'm just going to buy that. at so much cheaper than that," you've just made a huge mistake. If you're actually wanting to make a um, uh, yeah, finishing your repair off. And you want to make sure that it's absolutely perfect before that primer goes on. So that's why I say they all have vastly different properties from each other. This door, just give you a basic overview, it was a sliding door. I've changed it to a hinged door, uh, which means that, um, I mean, the door was very badly damaged anyway. But by converting it, it means that I've had to cut a lip off all the way around here and re-weld it which hasn't helped with the shape of the door. The door was very very badly damaged at the uh, the lower end also there's a rail under here that the um, rollers went into which I've cut off 
also mounted this hinge. There's a lot of strengthening on the inside, but I've had to bend the door slightly um, so that the hinges both go through the same axis, uh, which hasn't helped either, which means I've got quite a low spot around this hinge area, which I'm going to reinforce with some fiberglass, but I thought I'd just show you this first. Now, um, the substrate that we're dealing with is epoxy primer, so it's been rubbed down to bare steel and then epoxy primed and I've done this for corrosion protection issues because epoxy primer um, doesn't gather the same moisture that two pack primers or sim single pack primers do so that's why I've done that. Also, why does the, why does the camera keep going in and out of focus? So, um, yeah, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fiberglass this area and then we'll do the Evercoat demonstration. So I've just abraded the area with a 180 DA disc. Got a couple of DAs over here. So this is like a panel beater's DA. This is a painter's DA. This has got a shorter sweep than this one. This one's about a 10 mil. This one's about a six or an eight. Um, the larger the sweep, the more chances that you're going to get um, horseshoes uh, swirl marks and deep scratches so uh, for the smoother finishing off um, like prepping the primer and everything I'm going to use this DA both DA's have got dust extraction this one's got the larger sweep on it so I can put an 80 grit disc on there and just rip it out not too bothered about the um, surface at the stage of rubbing down filler really you just need to get it down as fast as you possibly can try and reduce some of the time so always wear a dusk mask um, try and get dusk mask with a valve in these 3M masks are pretty good make sure it's an FFP2 type mask as well um, they stand you in good stead also wear latex gloves just keeps the stuff off your hands because your hands get plastered in filler otherwise so I've abraded the area with 180 and um, after I've done that, I've used dust extraction anyway, but after I've done that, I get a nice clean cloth, another good tip here, good clean cloth, give the area a good rub down. This kind of acts like a bit of a tack, tack rag really, uh, removes a lot of the dust, then you can just blast it off finely with your airline, and it just means that, you know, 90% of the dust's come off in the cloth and you're not blasting all that dust up into the atmosphere and breathing it in. So. I'll uh, do my fiberglass in repair, I'll rub that down and then we'll come back and um, I'll show you the Evercoat filler demonstration. Just a couple of quick things before I show you the filler demonstration. Um, where you don't want the filler to go, mask the area off. I would say 99% of people I know don't do this and what, and what they end up with is the filler a run off down into the, all the little joints and everything. They'll end up getting filler everywhere they don't want it to get and then they can't get it out afterwards. So that's another little tip. The other thing is high spots. When you're rubbing stuff down and you, you get back to bare steel and you, you uh, so you're rubbing your filler down and then a little patch of steel comes up and you've not finished rubbing the filler down. This then turns into a high spot quite rapidly because as you keep sanding the filler is getting lower and lower and the high spot is coming up higher and higher so before you then re-skim so you're going to have to re-skim it again uh, get yourself a panel hammer and with a pick end just lightly tap lightly, uh, you know, <laughs> being the operative word just lightly tap in those high spots until they feel like really you want to tap them down so they feel slightly low really not so that they're level, but so they're just just slightly low, and then you know them when you refill. You know that um, these high spots aren't going to become an issue. Now you can be the greatest filler shaper in the world, and if you've got a high spot in a panel, it will ruin your repair. I can't stress this enough. Uh, just putting more filler over the top and having another crack at it. It isn't going to work. You're never going to get rid of that high spot till you tap it in. Um, Dave Jag, Dave the Jag, Dave Jaguar 66. Thank you very much for all your shout outs, Dave. I really do appreciate it. And um, 
with the with the view of the cameras going out of focus because both me and Dave seem to suffer with this I've worked out what it is Dave what it is is when you point the camera at a panel of a car and it's got no feature uh, the camera's auto focus um, goes into maniac mode and just zooms in and out in and out until it can try and focus upon something like this hammer for instance um, if you just put like a line across a panel or something you're on a if you're focusing on a door gap it will normally focus as soon as you go to the center of the panel it's got nothing uh, definitive to focus in on and I think that's why our cameras go out of focus when we're showing visuals of car body work anyway I'm gonna crack on with this demonstration so let's get on with it I'm finally ready to apply the Evoco easy sand the base filler that I've put in there is slightly low um, I think I'm gonna need quite a bit more in this area here this feels slightly low up here feels pretty good round here feels low so I would say once I finished filling it and sanding it finally the filler edge will probably end up here somewhere come round about here and then up there I would have said mixing the product up Got an onion board here or a mixing board. Um, these come, I think there's about 100 sheets on there. It comes new and uh, the resin can't soak into this paper because it's a kind of sealed paper. Uh, can of filler sometimes pays just to, with a good clean screwdriver, just to give it a bit of a stir up uh, just in case the resin has become separated from the filler, I do find that occasionally. Uh, be careful when you're stirring, just do it very gently. Don't go mad at it because what you don't want to do is introduce air into the product. You end up getting a lot of air bubbles in it then. It's very runny, very, very runny filler indeed. So I always mix it up. With these um, these cheap spreaders, you can buy a big pack for just a couple of pounds. And uh, one of my little tips, as this is a tips and tricks, is a bit of wet and dry paper. So a sheet of wet and dry paper, tear it down the centre, and then get your spreader. And fold it up in the wet and dry paper. What on earth is that going to be used for? Well I've got a few different things I use this for. What I use this for mainly is tuning the spreaders up so you get a brand new spreader and you think well just crack on and mix the uh, filler up but there's often a lot of uh, little imperfections on these spreaders so what you can do is just tune the edges up like that and just removes those imperfections from the leading edges on the spreaders. These spreaders, uh, very flexible spreaders, these are the ones I use for application. I don't use the cheaper ones that often for putting in the Evercoat because these are a bit stiff and these are very very flexible and you can buy these quite cheaply as well. They're kind of like a washing up bowl kind of plastic, very very pliable. So let's mix the stuff up. Um, you kind of put a puddle in the centre of your board. Uh, anything up to about a two inch puddle. Then you want to be looking at putting the hardener in halfway across the puddle. So you're looking at about from the halfway to the edge and that gives you the correct ratio if you were looking at a larger puddle say like a three inch puddle or around about that sort of size so if it was coming out to about there then you just put the hardener from one end to the other if it was a, a bigger again then you probably need one and a half but uh, this sort of this sort of two inch size you're just looking at going about halfway across and you soon get to realize how much hardener you need to put in just by sight really but this is a sort of 
rough kind of rule of thumb guide. So when you're mixing it up, this is how I mix the filler up. slowed down so that you can see I'm doing it. What we're trying to do is not introduce any air into the filler. It's all about keeping the air low. You'll end up in a situation where you've got a bit of unhardened filler on the spreader and when you come towards the end of mixing up your filler what you need to do really is give it a good wipe off on the board like that, give it a really good wipe off and you'll see that it's not mixed in properly so you can then mix that in really really well. Now if I was going to use this spreader to apply the filler, what I would then do is get a clean cloth and thoroughly clean all the filler off that. Just in case you've got a little bit of unhardened filler on there, then you're going to put that into your repair and then you're going to end up with a soft spot that hasn't hardened on your repair area and you'll end up having to dig that out and then refill it. So that's just another little tip there. And I'm not going to use that, I'm going to use my super soft and flexible spreaders to apply the filler. So let's go and put this filler Okay, so your first in coat, you need to press it in really hard, as hard as you can, and get it very, very finely and thinly in there. So you're pressing it right in, like that, you press it as hard as you can into the panel. You want a nice thin skim all over the panel. I picked a bit of muck there already. Disaster. So as you as you push that first coat in, it's a little bit like your vinyl wrapping or something. You're trying to get all that air out of the filler, get the best contact between what's going on underneath and your spreader. Remember, I said I'm just going to put a thin coat on it. I don't want to go over it too many times because it will it will tear up if I'm not careful. Don't know if I'm gonna have enough here to do the whole panel. Build it up in layers, put a layer on like that, put a layer on that, and then put another layer on and another layer on. Just build it up like that, thin coats as possible. I mentioned these spreaders, these spreaders you see you can bend them like that, so you bend the spreader and you hold it with your hand so it's bent and then you come to a nice curved section without getting in the way of the camera hopefully and you can bring it along with a nice, try and do it left handed so I don't get in the way of the camera so you can get a nice curved section like that rather than it looking like a 50 pence piece or a threatening bit. Makes no sense to anybody who's watching in the States. There we go. Look at that, it follows the contour of the bottom of that door. The fill is already taken on the shape of the door. It's running off the edge here. I think we might just do this. There's a little one in there. One across there. Smaller spreader again for the curved section at the top.
This is just on our edge right here. Yeah, it's trying to tear up now, but it's absorbed in, so I won't go over it too many times. But I've got to try and get it smoother than it is. And try to put a bit of a, a leading edge into that into that primer there, so it's not got much of a build on it. Just try on it over, get it as smooth as possible. Right at this stage, get the masking, get the masking off. All the filler goes off. Otherwise, it will set over the top of the masking tape, and then it'll tear the tape off at an angle, and the filler will be stuck over the top. And you won't get it off. Get the masking tape off at this stage. It hasn't gone off, which is, hasn't quite gone off. And then I just smooth down some of the edges as well. Just take that sharp edge off with my finger. It's just starting to go now. I can just tell it's going off. Just try and lie these edges down a little bit. Right, I'll try and get the camera in. You see it's got a bit of a sheen. Okay, that's the sort of finish you're gonna end up getting. This is the curved part of the door. And as you can see in the strip lights, how, how good that already looks. We've already got straight lines going across, which is a good indication that it's going to come out quite well. Now I was saying it picks up, I don't know if the camera will be able to get in. Can I get the camera in so you can see that? It would be really handy if you could. There we go, camera's focused, thank goodness. You can just see where it's just lifted. It's just picking up there where I'm pretty sure what's happened is the resin soaked into the filler underneath. And if I tried to drag the spreader across that again, it would just start looking like a ploughed field before long. But as you can see, the rest of it's not too bad. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to let this go off. You see it's quite shiny at the moment. That shine will drop quite rapidly. Um, it'll go very... This is uh, about five minutes later. And... Although it still looks quite glossy, it's actually started to go off now. I can I can touch it. And it's got this kind of waxy film on the surface. It's almost as if the resins come to the surface. There we go. Looks completely different, doesn't it? It's so smooth. So when I rub down with a with a long block. I normally go across like that, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, two or three times, and then I change to the exact opposite direction. What this does is, as you draw the as you draw the uh, block across, you put like a toothed like a toothed finish on the filler. So you imagine there's all these like um, teeth running along this way. 
and then when you go across in the opposite direction you knock all those off and this accelerates the rubbing down process so I'll go over one way two or three times moving across the panel like that then I'll go the other way and then what I'll do is give it some circular motion never ever go like that otherwise you just end up with tram lines all over it I've got this other block and uh, this is my favourite block it's got a handle in the middle this is nice because you can just do a a single handed operation rather than just Okay guys, I'm going to jam as much as I can into the last couple of minutes because I've realised I could have done a three hour video and still not run out of things to talk about. So I'm going to jam as much as I can in. So, right, um, <clears throat> so preparation. Just go over the, uh, the, the best points I can give to you. So preparation for filler work when you're applying filler to bare steel or old paint work, whatever. Uh, prep with 180. Um, don't go any coarser than 180. Go coarser if you want to get the old paint off, whatever, but try and finish in a 180. This means that um, when you're rubbing out your filler and you're going over with a final 180, you'll get a nice smooth feather edge and uh, far less chance of sinkage once you start doing the paint side of things. If you've got hard, harsh scratches in it and it sinks back, because all these products sink, fillers sink, primers sink, paint sinks and if you're trying to turn over something quick as well and you're not leaving it you know days and days and days to dry out what you'll find is it'll look great on the day a week later you'll have a look at it and under close observation or not even close observation you'll have all these harsh scratch lines that will have come back through the paintwork so always finish your prep work off of 180 some people say 240 but I found that um, 180 really um, you don't really need to go much finer than that I don't think um, I think that's fine enough right uh, types of spreaders what I use personally for mixing up is these um, these cheapo spreaders pretty good really they're not bad for putting filler in but like I say the Evercoat stuff particularly the Evercoat stuff I would always apply it with one of these kind of I don't know what sort of material they are. They're very, very flexible and pliable, kind of like washing bowl kind of uh, plastic. Very pliable, like I say, you can give it a curve. You can bend the, bend the spread into a nice curved shape. If you've got a curved section on your vehicle that you're repairing it and you don't want to put these tram lines going up that way, then you can bend the spreader, draw it down and replicate the curve like I've already shown you. Um, Applying spreaders, uh, applying spreaders, applying fillers, as I said, uh, try and apply your filler in coats so you're building up layers. This helps to keep the um, envelopment of air to a minimum so you don't get pinholes and air bubbles in the filler. 
or not as many anyway in this Evercoat stuff uh, I hardly get any pinholes in that at all I'm more surprised to see pinholes than not if you know what I'm trying to say um, when when I'm filling the area like I said earlier tape up the bits you don't want the filler to run down into also another good method for tape if you had a hard swage line across the door so say say you had a hard line across the door you know what I'm talking about you know you look at a car and in the bodywork you've got a line and then it gets damaged all right on the line can be one of the hardest uh, repairs to get right um, another good tip is use masking tape hardly anybody does this and they get into all sorts of trouble and I kind of worked a way out of doing this a few years ago it works for me really really well what I do is I prep the whole area I've bought my dent out I prep the whole area I've got my line going across which is distorted because it's all ripply still so what I do is I work out where the line was or is just about get my tape and I tape along the line like that so I tape along the line then what I do then is I fill this top area or bottom area or whatever you want to do first I don't do the whole lot in one go so I'll, I'll, I'll fill this area leaving it higher obviously than the tape the filler and then just as the filler is starting to set only just as it's just starting pull the tape off like that and you've got a nice hard edge there you've got a massive step and then what I do is I then tape again over the top but on the filler on the filler side so I tape on the filler side tape along so I don't get any filler on the filler that I've already put in and then I fill the other half of the repair and pull the tape off again and this means that I've got a perfect line already in the filler work or going across already and as I've already shown you with the Evercoat stuff I can almost get a finish that kind of looks like it doesn't need much rubbing down so you know the least amount of rubbing down you got to do the least amount of shaping you got to do after you put the filler in can only be a good thing um, great rubbing down filler um, 80 very rarely do I use anything coarser than 80 I use this net kind of stuff this is made by Merca abrasive stuff it's okay but I don't like using rubbing stuff by hand with this it's great for on a be, being on a DA or on a block, but if I want to do some detail work, then I find this stuff not that much good for that. So I, I like to have a bit of paper as well. So like I say, start with 180, try and stay away from your edges, because you want your edges nice and feathered out. So try and stay away with the 80. Um, smaller repairs, uh, I use 120 grit to do my repairs in 120 grit, just because I get less scratches in it and then always finish off with 180 grit. Uh, you can do 240 if you want, but I mean, I don't think there's much point going much, much smoother than 180, all seem pretty good to me. And um, yeah, so uh, the other trick I showed you earlier, putting a spreader and a bit of um, wet and dry paper, excellent tool. This is an excellent tool, not only for tuning your spreaders, but the other thing you can do is get some, um, what I use, this is for the initial shaping, so I've got my 80 DA disc. I simply fold it in half, and then I wrap it around the spreader, and then I use it like this to rub things down. Excellent for detailed work. You can bear on the spreader, and it keeps it nice and flat along this edge, and you can really dig things out and shape it well with this. This is again one of my own little ideas that I found invaluable over the years. Um, so when you're checking, so you, you're happy with you're happy with your repair. You got your repair done. You uh, you think well, I want to just check it over now. So um, use your hands. Obviously, your hands are your best tool in the world. So when you're checking your work. How many times have I said to people, oh, you know, when you're checking this, see, feel how flat that feels, and they'll come along and they'll go, oh, that's lovely and smooth, isn't it? This isn't the way to check things. Definitely not. What you need to use is the flat of your hand. You may have heard this or not in the past, but if you're right-handed, use your left hand to check things. If you're left-handed, 
use your right hands to check things. This is because you've got more sensitivity in the hand that you don't lead with. So I'm predominantly right-handed, but I do a lot of work left and right, but I'm predominantly uh, right-handed. So I always use my left hand. I don't do that. You don't do that when you're checking things. You, what you do is you get your hand as flat to the surface as possible and you run it up and down the entire length of the repair and you'd be amazed at what you can pick up with your hands. Another little trick, so if you really can't tell whether things are right or wrong, what you can do is get one of these pump up um, bottles. Uh, they're solvent proof bottles and what you can do is soak the area and you've got a perfect reflection now of what the panel like to so if you if you um if I tip the panel up and down like that you can see in the strip lights strip lights are perfect for checking things out um, you should be able to see in the camera you've got this whoop, there it is looking at the camera screen so yeah you've got this line strip light line you can see that this line is pretty straight i mean it goes around the um obviously it goes around there because that's curved and it comes curving around here but what we're looking for is straight lines we're looking for evenness because any wobbles or evenness are going to be picked up once you've got that shiny paint on and um, this is another way you can check to see what your filler work's going to look like when you put your paint on or a very good idea what it's going to look like anyway to be honest with you I can tell whether things are right or wrong just by feeling them so I don't bother with this much but if I need it occasionally or sometimes still go back to using it. I hope you found that review useful and entertaining and um, just summing up really the product as I've uh, described to you how fantastically wonderful it is. Um, there are always going to be some pluses and some negatives with anything because uh, if something's really really good at one thing then it normally lacks somewhere else. So reviewing the product um, its anti-pinholing um, properties are second to none. Uh, there is nothing better on the market, I believe, um, that eradicates pinholes where filler work is concerned. If you've ever done filler work before, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And uh, if you apply this stuff properly, you're more surprised when you get a pinhole than when you don't get one, if you know what I'm saying. So um, the only thing I would uh, say ab about this product is um, it's kind of like a finishing off, it's a, it's a finishing off final skim filler. And I believe um, where you could, I mean, if you, if you were stretching the this filler's capabilities, so you're slightly abusing the product, if, it, if it's extremely cold climate, and you're using it probably too cold to actually really be practically using this product what i do find sometimes is that maybe it's gone a little bit stiffer than it normally is and what it can do is it can absorb into uh, the substrate that you're putting on so if there's another if there's another brand of filler underneath or if you're filling it over the top of itself what it can sometimes do is the resins seem to absorb into the substrate and it can tear up slightly. Um, what I what I do myself to uh, stop this issue is I give it a very, very light, quick coat of this stuff and quickly followed by another coat straight over the top and this totally eradicates that problem. Another problem with it is um, sometimes what you can find is if you're using multiple layers of this product and then you break through into the layer underneath then the two different layers don't sand down at exactly the same rate. So you end up with a kind of ripple where you've broken through. Um, again, it's probably be abusing the product slightly because really it is a final skim product. But it's amazing stuff. 
sands down really easy. Sands down when it hasn't properly gone off because it's got this uh, special additive in it that stops the paper from clogging. So you never ever get clogged paper. Sands down really easily. Feathers in fantastically well to any old paint products. So you'll always get that lovely feathered in um, seamless repairs. And um, yeah, it's probably one of the best products I've ever used. I'm very, very impressed with it. Bye for now.